Hello, Driving Intelligence Community. Funny thing happened on the way to the forum. So this past weekend, I went up and back to North Carolina, 120 miles each way. On the way back, I actually posted in my community forum section on this channel that I had hit 260,000 miles, original engine, original transmission, bragging about it. Got home and uh, parked it flawlessly. I'm using some ethanol-free fuel lately, so I'm actually getting much better fuel economy, so stay tuned for, for a video on that. Get back in the vehicle to run some errands. About two hours later, no third, no fourth gear. I didn't do anything crazy, didn't tow anything. It was, like I said, it was driving perfectly. So this video is gonna talk about what I need to do. It's likely I'm gonna to have to do a full rebuild. And fortunately, if you've seen it in previous videos, I've actually got a transmission, another T, uh, 4R70W that I bought for 50 bucks that I already tore apart. It's time to put a new one back together. First time I've ever done it. So we're gonna see how this goes. Anyway, let's see what the uh, potential resolutions are and then we'll go from there. Old girl's on the lift, ready for me to do some work. There are three possibilities for no third, no fourth that I have investigated through drive my own intelligence. Number one, shift solenoids. These could be bad. It's probably not the issue, but at least I wanted to rule this out before I have to go into the transmission. This is easy to change. I'll show that uh, in this video. I had an extra one laying around that I know works. So I'll rule this out, number one. Number two, the next possibility could be shift accumulators. Uh, there is four of them in there, and I need to uh, drop the valve body to do this. A lot more difficult than the shift solenoid pack that doesn't require dropping the valve body, but uh, I've understood that possibly the broken clip that holds these in could uh, be a problem actually jamming up the valve body. So I probably want to check this as well. And then, the most catastrophic possibility is that the direct drum, forward direct drum could be bad. It could have cracked and it will just spin freely. And I've already taken this other transmission apart, so that's why I've got this thing set up here. But if this is the problem, it's definitely catastrophic. It's a total rebuild, or at least you gotta tear it down to replace this. So I'm gonna go ahead and buy a new one of these. I actually think that it's already shown up. I've got this from a company called Transmission Bench. And the guy that's helping me there, Jimmy, he's actually made a lot of videos on 4 r 70 w rebuilds. He's been very helpful with this. I've got the Sonax uh, Zip Kit or Sure Cure Kit, which is supposed to take care of a lot of the problems that these 4 r 70 ws have. You can see I've got the reverse band, the overdrive band. This is the total rebuild kit, plus uh, a slew of the shift accumulators and other parts and bearings, et cetera. It's all gonna go in the new transmission. So I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. I'm definitely gonna rebuild the other transmission, but I was kind of hoping that I could figure out what's wrong with the truck before I get this deep into it. Incidentally, here are all the parts that came out of that other transmission, came out of the same year, F-150 with the four wheel drive. A lot of parts, I gotta go back in that, gotta replace a lot of seals, et cetera, the clutch packs. But first things first, let's get in that shift solenoid pack and see if that resolves the problem. First step, I'll pull the transmission pan, and you can see I've got a dormant unit here with a drain plug. I highly recommend you getting this. This is one of the best things for doing any transmission work. With the pan and filter off, I've taken off this shift solenoid pack. It goes right there where the torque converter control solenoid is. Two bolts hold it in. I've got the old Ford unit that uh, was not bad when I replaced the other one. And I'm going to put that in and see, uh, see where we go from here. I failed to film when I was pulling off this electrical strap. And here is the electrical that goes through the case. This is what you connect to to go to your ECU. Strap goes across. First point of contact is a, the shift solenoids and you got the torque converter control solenoid and then the EPC solenoids right here. So that strap's gotta come up in order to get that shift solenoid out of there. Just thought I'd show that before I move on. Inspecting the contents of the pan, I don't see anything unusual. The magnet has a normal wear and tear on there. I don't see any metal fragments or pieces. I have not wiped this out, so it looks good. This is the fluid I drained out, which is kind of dark. Here you can see it in the pan, and it's still pink. Uh, probably could stand to be changed, but I don't get the impression that it's been burnt or it's burning. It doesn't smell like it's burning, so... Crossing my fingers that the shift solenoid is the issue. 
Unfortunately, a test drive after replacing the shift solenoids showed no change. So it's staying in second right now. It will not shift. Here it goes. You can see high RPM, no third gear, let off the gas. It kind of uh, does a little bit of shifting, but it's bad. There's something wrong here. So I need to pull it into second to get me up this hill without letting the transmission slip too much and get that transmission temperature up too high. You can see that the transmission temperature is climbing a little bit higher than normal. So I gotta be cautious. I mean, I'm gonna replace the torque converter anyway, but uh, I don't wanna burn anything else up in there. Given the shift solenoids didn't do the job replacing those shift solenoids, what I've done is I've pulled this valve body away from the transmission. And you can see here the shift accumulators. There's four of them, as I mentioned earlier in the video. That's one, two, which is replaceable with the valve body in place. These three are not. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it could be a clip that uh, is jamming up the valves or the valve body. I just decided that instead of going through all this, it's a, this is a lot of extra work to pull that, drain all that fluid, check that, maybe have to replace accumulators. I'm just gonna go ahead and rebuild this other transmission I've got sitting here and move forward with it. So step two, I'm just gonna throw out, and step three is what I'm going for, a complete rebuild. Hope this helps you. Stay tuned for the, uh, the videos that are coming up uh, where I rebuild this transmission. Again, it's the first time I've ever done it, and we'll get the, uh, the old 10th gen back on the road.